Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. You need to know how to study. You need to know how to read. You need to know how to ask a question. It's like these are skills that nobody teaches kids. We throw our kids into the great ocean of school and just hope they turn out to be an A student or at least a B student or at least pass the course so we can get you into college somewhere. No, the goal is not to pass. The goal is to do good. The goal is to try to do real good. So we go through this SQR. You've got to study. You ask questions. Then these three R's. And again, you know, I'll be writing these. Number, number, the first R is reading. I tell people when you read something, and if you ever see any of my books in my library, if you ever come to my office, they're marked up. Why? I underline key words. If I read something, something stands out to me. It might be something that made me laugh. might be something that made me question. I underline everything. What it? So I don't know. That's just something different. I need to underline that word. So you start reading underlined stuff. The second R is recite. You remember what you say out loud. That's why we taught our kids the ABCs by singing. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Why do we sing it? You remember what you sing. We've taught the multiplication tables by singing. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. And we do the addition, the multiplication. When Moses crossed the Red Sea, God said, teach them this song. What? Teach them this song that they might remember. You remember what you recite. You remember what you sing. So I tell kids, when you study, I'll be talking out loud. Get somewhere where you're by yourself and talk out loud. Recite it. Say it to yourself. I need to recite that. Why? I'm going to remember what I say more than what I just read. The next thing is after you recite is review. And this is where you go back and, man, you've got the test tomorrow. And I like to do it two days ahead of time, not the night before. Let's go back. Let's just review the chapter. Let's just hit the chapter titles again. I'll promise you, if you'll do this, listen, I've told you all my kids have gone on some form of scholarship. I can help you succeed. I don't necessarily going to raise your IQ. I have nothing to do with that. You were born with an IQ. But I, your skills, I can raise your skill level, and I can make you a lot more effective. And you're going to love it a lot more than you do right now. Number three after reading is test-taking skills. This is pretty simple, test-taking. You know, you go through, for example, you go to take an ACT or SAT test. First thing you're going to do is just read through the test. You know, because, well, we have one hour to take this test. First thing is just read through. Don't get stuck on, on point one or point two. Read. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the first thing I know the answer to. Well, I know the answer number three. Then mark it. I know the answer number seven, eight, ten, and twelve. Then answer it. Just go through the, if you've got a hundred question test, here's how you take a test. Give what you know first. Then go back. What do you got? Well, I don't know the answer to this. Well, if it's multiple choice, I've got four. Two of them are going to be right the opposite of what they ought to be. Every multiple choice test Two of those four answers are going to be weird. I promise that. Well, dear God, it's not that. Then you got a 50-50 shot at the right answer. You understand that? Because it's going to be one of those other two. I'm not remember, but it's going to be one of these two. So I just improved your chance 50% by just telling you how to take a test, how to read it. Same thing about reading a paragraph or a composition thing. What's the key words? Who's doing the talking? What are they trying to say? Where are they trying to end up? And you just process of logic. You can go through test-taking skills. So I've gone through my kids. Okay, I don't care what test you're taking. I can give you some skills to improve this. After test-taking, we go writing skills. Not like this because people hate writing, composition. Now I've got one of my six kids that's a journalism major. She loved it. The other five hated it. I said, but you're going to have this. So I'm going to go through and give you this, writing skills. Number one. You're going to write something? I tell them, pre-write something. You're going to go down, we're going to pre-write it. What does that mean? Well, we're going to write it out just rough first. Well, you're going to write a, you're going to write a short story. You've got to write a biography. You want to, let's just pre-write it. Here's the, here's the highlights. I'm going to get through these things, you know, and just do it, you know, just small bites somewhere. Pre-write it. After you pre-write it, then you organize. Okay, I've pre-written a page. Now I'm going to have to organize. Okay, well, these two thoughts go together. These go together. And this is out of place. This actually goes up here. You start organizing your thoughts. I said, oh, okay, okay, I kind of got an idea. Here's my main point. Here's where I'm going. I'm trying to introduce it here. This is sort of a side lot, kind of, you know, makes it more palatable, you know, whatever you're looking at. After you do that, you write your rough draft. What's that? Well, this is what it ought to look like when I get through, but I'm going to rewrite it. This isn't my final draft. This is my rough, but this is what I really want it to look like. You do your rough draft, you go through, and then after you do your rough draft, you go back and you revise it. 
How many times? A bunch. That's why it's not good to do it the night before. Give yourself at least two days. Because I've done stuff I've written out and I realize, that's good. No, that's not good. Now, why did I say that last night? What was I thinking? I must have been tired. Too much caffeine or something like that. That was a dumb thing to say. I never should have said that. And so you go back and you revise, you revise, and all of a sudden, I'll guarantee you, I've told my kids, I can raise this paper two-letter grades. If you'll practice this right here on writing, I can raise Why? I'm going to make you think. Thinkers. <laughs> I'll make you think. Say, I hate this, and I don't want to do it. And you're going to write a piece of junk, and you're going to get a D minus or an F. If you'll listen, I can give you a skill on how to write better. And it's just four little points. You know, do the rough draft, go through, revise the thing, and lay it out. So that's the writing skills. The next is, this is real good. On this right here, it's called, I call note-taking skills because I've seen kids sit in the classroom and just stare at you. It's like, are you taking notes? Are you writing anything down? Are you think you're going to remember this? We're not recording this. I'm not giving you a handout. And the reason teachers do that is because you remember what you write. So I'll give you this, note-taking skills. Number one, you're going to have a piece of paper. What you want to do, you're going to write down the date. Okay, what is today? Well, today's Monday, you know, July 1st, whatever. Okay, what's the second thing? Well, write so you can read it. Write legibly. Don't get in a hurry. Learn shorthand if you have to. It's a great skill to learn. Okay, I'm going to write this. Number three, try to take notes in some sort of outline form. You're not going to write down every word that comes out of that teacher's mouth or that professor's mouth. You're not going to write every word. What do you list for? Key words, key phrases, and things especially he repeats. If that professor and that lady repeats something, mm, she just said that twice already. That must be important. Uh, you, you, use, use your words, not the professor's words. You ever had a professor or a teacher say something like, that's Greek. I have no idea what that is. Well, then I need to use my own words. Here's what I believe they meant by that. I'm going to write this right here. Um, any diagrams that write up on the blackboard, diagram structures, rewrite it. You draw it out. If they drew a graph, draw your graph out on your paper just like they did it. Uh, you need to start recording stuff like whenever they say, well, okay, this is on page 27 of your book. Oh, they mentioned page 27. Write that down. Uh, when, you, when you go through your notes, Put an asterisk next to something that stands out. Well, I remember that he said this is important. Why? I don't know. It's not important to me, but he said it's important because that's probably going to be on the test. That teacher, that professor already knows what's going to be on that exam. They may be covering it in class. They may not. But most of the time they will. So if you'll pay attention to note-taking skills like, okay, I got my date. I'm trying to write down an outline form. I'm writing any graph or something I put on that blackboard, and it must be important in anything they've repeated. Uh, you need to ask your instructor or other students if you miss something. I do this all the time. I sit in class like I'm writing, and he says, oh, man, what was that? I'm writing down the last thing. Oh, what was that? So I'll make a note. What was this after he said this? At the end of class, I'll usually ask a fellow student, hey, hey, what was that he said after he said this? Remember when he's talking about that? What was the next thing? Well, he mentioned this. Oh, man, that's good. Thank you. Or I've had to go up and ask the professor, and they don't mind. Now, they may be rude, they don't mind. Professor, when you were mentioning this a while ago, you mentioned this, but I, I, I missed the next point. What were you trying to explain? Well, I was saying this, and you'll be surprised how helpful they will be. So you go through, oh, thank you. Now, that's about note-taking skills. Most people show up in class, they don't want to take any notes. They're just trying to get out of class or get them a nap. You're not going to make it. You might as well stay. You should have stayed out of school. Because if you don't learn the skills that's going to help you do this, you're not going to make it anywhere. You're not going to get it. After note-taking skills, what I call study skills, and this is real good. Now, just bear with me on this because this is one I've written down for my kids several times. Number one, you've got to have a place. You're going to have to plan to study. Where are you going to study? I'm going to study right there in that corner. You don't study laying on your bed. Bed's taken out. Really don't study at the kitchen table. That's a place to eat. Find a comfortable place, well lit, to sit down and study. Number two, uh, when, when you sit down, you, you, you're going to go over your hardest subjects first. Now, this is difficult. I don't like this. I teach it. I've had to do it. What do you got? Well, I've got four things to study tonight. I've got an English lit thing going on. I've got a science fair project coming up. i got a, a algebra 2 test. Like, What do you hate the most? Algebra 2. So what are you going to do? I'm going to study the hardest thing first. It is the 80-20 rule. You remember the 80-20 rule? You know, 80% of the profit comes from 20% of the things. Um, if you have a list of 10 things to do, Two of them are going to yield 80% of the best uh, advantage to you. Okay, what's the top two most important things? Always study your hardest subject first. Get it out of the way. Don't, well, I'll put it off. Because then you're going to wait till you're tired. You've already had a snack. It's late at night. Don't save the hardest for last. David hit Goliath first before he went after the army. Let's do that first. Next this, avoid marathon study sessions. You don't do well. Four-hour runs, six-hour runs, you don't do well. 
uh, go back to Ecclesiastes, time and place for everything. Break your time up. Break it up into sections. I tell kids, don't ever study longer than an hour. Get up after 50 minutes. Go take a walk around the house. Walk around outside the house. Get a drink of water and do 10 push-ups. Do something. You know, stretch. Do something. Then sit back down and do it again. Stay out of those marathon runs because your blood's not moving as good. The oxygen's not in as much. You're getting sleepier. And you think you're doing something. No, you're not retaining near as much. Uh, be aware of your best time of the day. Now, my wife and I are out the opposite. Her best time to study is early in the morning. My best time is late at night. We were going to school together. It's like, I want to study with you, but I can't. In the morning, I'm foggy. I just don't do it. I do best at night. It's quiet. I don't have anything else on my mind except sleep. So I study real good. So that's my best time. Um, oh, don't get too comfortable. I mentioned about don't lay on the bed. Don't, don't get too comfortable. Nice and easy, but not too comfortable. Uh, cut off the phone. Shut your phone off. No text messaging. Don't interrupt. Because I'll promise you, you'll get right in the middle of something. Somebody will call you, oh, man, I've lost my thought. Don't do that. Uh, learn to say no. Uh, go to the library, learn how to use the library. But library's your best friend. Books, uh, you can do it on the internet. Library's your best friend. Learn how to Google, learn how to find that information. Uh, then I ask this question, would I pay me for the quality of work I'm doing right now? <laughs> if the answer is no, get up and take a break. Come back and do it again. The next thing's memory skills. I'll just give you this real quick. Uh, memory, make it meaningful. Now, I'll throw some pictures to it. Uh, sometimes if I'm studying, I'll sit on the back of my chair. I will just do, I'll get up out of the seat, put my feet, and sit on the back of it. Why? Just to create something different, to create a memory. You know, I'll go stand up. I'll go stand on the front porch and read a chapter. Why? I got to make something different. I got to create a memory with this. Man, I was on the front porch when I read that. Man, I was sitting on the back of my chair when I read that. I'm going to do something different. Visualize stuff because visual stuff's what makes it work. Then the last thing is this. Speaking skills, because you're going to have to give an oral book report or a presentation someplace, and this is what makes you break. Of, of the top two greatest fears of the 100 greatest fears of all humans, public speaking is either number one or number two. People are terrified of this. I hated public speaking. It's what I do for a living now, but there was a time I didn't like it. So do this. Number one, uh, you got to think positive. What is this? I get to do this. I don't have to do this. You almost tell yourself, well, I get to do an oral book report tomorrow. And I, oh, God, I got to do it. No, I get to do this. I go, there's no option. I get to do it. Number two, you need to be at your physical and mental best. Try to get some rest. You don't get all wound up. Take a couple of deep breaths. I tell people, always, I, let's relax. You ever take your blood pressure? You know what they'll say? If you sit there just for about two minutes, take a couple of deep breaths, your blood pressure will really drop really good for you. Like, Let's relax here before I talk. Let's not get all wound up when I walk out there to make my presentation. Uh, take a couple of deep breaths before you start. Work especially hard on your introduction. What's the biggest thing? How you start. You know, I do public speaking all the time. I teach about 70 to 80 seminars a year. I always open up the story about a kid or a family. What are you doing? Trying to relate to them. I always, Jesus always taught in parables. Why? So he could relate. It's kind of like fishing. You understand that? Oh, yeah, we understand that. It's kind of like farming. You understand that? Oh, yeah, Jesus, this is God. But he's always using stories to relate. And then the last thing is look people in the eye when you talk to people. Look at them. They're not going to bite your head off. Look at people. When you do public speaking, just relax, take some deep breaths. Work on that introduction because that's the most important thing. The first 60 seconds are critical, how you start out, and then look them in the eye. And then when you finish, thank them. Man, I really appreciate this opportunity today. I'll guarantee you, I'll raise you two grade levels if you'll do that. And those eight of the main skills to study. You teach that to your kids, let them listen to the CD, I guarantee you they're going to improve their grade and they're going to make you look good in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemcgeeministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.